Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Terry Kuster and today we talk about laser welding of plastics. Okay, let us have a look at the to content of today's topic. I've split this presentation to six parts. We will start with an overview of joining of plastics. Then you will get to know the four key working principles of laser welding. Then we discuss the advantages and disadvantages of laser welding, followed by the four process process types of laser welding and the joint types and also the clamping units and by the end we close with application examples. Okay, let's start with the overview of joining of plastics. There are three main uh, methods how to join plastics. You can uh, have a mechanical joining using screws and bosses either directly or um, in molded into your part. You can use um, adhesive joining using glues and you can weld, use welding techniques and among the welding we can distinguish uh, several different techniques. So we can have vibration welding, ultrasonic welding, high frequency welding, extrusion, hot air welding, hot plate and laser welding using near infrared. And this is where we put the focus of today. Let's continue with laser welding, the four key working principles. So what are the four uh, key working principles? So first we need to have a transmissive upper layer. We need an absorbing lower layer. Then we need a good contact between the upper and the lower layer. And we need to have the, uh, the right material compatibility. So when we have a closer look at the transmissive upper polymer layer, so most thermoplastics transmit near infrared beam and um, the, the upper layer needs to be trans transparent in a wavelength uh, around 800 nanometer to 1064. And this is also shown here. So we have here our transparent polymer upper layer and the absorbing polymer layer. And here is important to notice laser transparent versus optically transparent. So although this part can be um, black or opaque, it is still transmissive to infrared. So for example, what I have shown here, so we can have a black opaque layer and still transmissive to a 918 nanometer laser. However, we need a minimum transmission of 3%. Then the absorbing lower layer so the, the main job of the absorbing layer is to, to turn the, the remaining laser energy into heat um, and this heat will melt then the absorbing layer and uh, also transfer this heat to the, to the transport layer and uh, can so enable the, the joining. And here in the absorbing layer, additives, colorants and fillers uh, play a key, op uh, key role for the absorption and the most effective and most economical filler is carbon black suit and you use around 0.2 to 0.5 uh, for by volume and you can have already excellent absorbing properties. Then the contact between the upper and the lower layer. So we need uh, to ensure the proper contact to have a, a good conduction of the heat. And the contact between those two layers is achieved by using different clamping methods. Um, and there are also special component design. And then also the material compatibility. So you can have the, the case that uh, you have two polymers which are which you want to join and they can but are not required to be the same type of thermoplastic. So the most critical factors here are, as already previously mentioned, melt temperature. So the transparent polymer and absorbing polymer need to have the similar melt temperature range and also the surface energy of the plastics play a, play a role. And when we look, most common thermoplastics uh, are easily weldable. So the nylons like 
polyamide 6, polyamide 66, POMS, PPT, polycarbonates, ABS, polypropylene, and also elastomers such as thermoplastic elastomers and uh, other polyolefins. Here is useful to use uh, so, com so called um, material compatibility charts. Here is an uh, example from the company LPKF. And here you can have a look when you have now um, the, abs the transmissive layer is a PA6 and the absorbing layer is also PA6. You can see this works uh, pretty well. And when you go now to uh, uh, PA612 as absorbing layer, it also works. And when you go to a PA66 as absorbing layer, you have the same effect like a PA6. And when you change now the the transmissive layer to a PA66 and use a PA6 as absorbing, this also works. So you see, it's really um, uh, it's the the polymer itself and the, the melt temperatures of the polymer um, uh, play here the the key role. And such charts can help you to in material selection also to to align the the polymers. Okay. Let's discuss the advantages and disadvantages of laser welding. Let's start with the advantages first. And one of the, the biggest is the, the lower costs uh, compared to other joining methods. So when you think you have no consumables um, and also the, the, the maintenance is a minimum and you have also fewer failed parts, then also uh, the exposure of the parts to, to stress is, is, a, is minimum. So you have a localized heat and this allows also to, to join and weld sensitive applications. Then we can uh, achieve high joint strength. Uh, this is also, there are several tests like this pull tests and there is the aim that the, the weld strength is bigger than the parent uh, material. So when you pull them apart, you should, you should really have the parent material um, attached to the weld. Then complex uh, shapes um, are possible because the laser is always moving relative to the joint. Then it's a very clean process. So you have no particles which can be removed and also the, the high precision is an advantage. So you can have really uh, thin welds such as two microns. And welding of different parts and materials possible. So you can have a hard to soft combination, you can have a soft to soft combination. So there are um, several possibilities. And uh, what are the disadvantages? So we have in the beginning a first big initial investment. We need to have the, the laser equipment, um, the device and also the, the clamping and robotics. However, then once it is running, um, uh, the, the costs are, are much lower. Then we have some limitations to, to the part geometry. So when we have thick parts like five millimeters, it's already difficult to for the laser to, to cross. So we have here as a rule of thumb three millimeters a maximum thickness. And the, what we also already discussed, the selected polymer must be optically suited, optical in the sense for infrared. And um, we also have to be careful with the, the part tolerances. Like when we have a flat part and we have some warpage then uh, or gaps due to the molding, this can be a disadvantage then in the laser welding um, and not a, a, a conform, a uniform weld. Okay, let's continue with the four process, process types of uh, plastic welding. So we have the contour welding, we have the simultaneous welding, quasi simultaneous welding and the mask welding. Contour welding, the name already is saying it. So the, the laser beam is focused on a on into a point and follows the contour of the part which needs to uh, be welded. So it moves relative to the component. 
So when you have the advantage when you have large parts and also three dimensional parts. Then the simultaneous welding. Here the entire weld seam is is heated at the same time. So there you use specially designed fiber optics and uh, you can transfer the laser energy into the pattern of the, the weld seam. It's a it's advantage when you have high volume runs that require a really low cycle time and little flexibility or variation. Then we have the quasi simultaneous welding. So it is a combination of contour and simultaneous welding. So you have again a, a single focused laser beam. However, this is guided by a Galvo scanning mirrors, as you can, can see here. And it uh, allows that the entire joint line is effectively heated simultaneously and welded. And then we have the uh, mask welding. What you can see here in blue, this is a, is a mask with the um, contour of, the, of, of the, the part which needs to be welded. However, the whole area is exposed to laser and um, so it's uh, not really a, an efficient process. Uh, you need always a new mask for a new part and you, uh, you can imagine you need in much more laser power than actually is needed to make a simple contour. So among those four, it is more the contour, simultaneous and quasi-simultaneous welding, which are uh, nowadays in use in industry. Okay, let's discuss the joint types and the clamping units. So there are again several possibilities how to join two parts together and I have listed here the four major joints. There are several more in the in the literature, however most common are lap joints. So you can see here we always have an overlap of two parts and uh, in this overlap we, we focus on the laser beam and have the welding line here. We have also a butt joint, for example it is shown here, however it's already more difficult um, also with in terms of the clamping unit to hold those two parts together. We have radial joints um, similar to the to the lap joint however in a, in a radial when you have a curvature and um, like for example a, a drinking glass and then there are also the T-joints where the, the, the absorbing part is uh, has a has a rib and this rib is then due to the heat and the melt collapsing and uh, uh, joins then the outer absorbing layer uh, a transmissive layer then clamping tools so to to realize a joint um, we need to to clamp the two parts together first and the the most effective and simplest way is glass or acrylic clamping tools As you is shown here. So we have uh, our workpiece carrier, we have our absorbing layer, our transmissive layer, and then we have the clamping layer, which is here made out of glass. So the, the infrared has no problem to go through here and um, uh, go through the transmissive and then to the absorptive layer. Simple method, good for prototyping and small runs. Uh, downside is um, the component surface must be almost flat uh, and there is the risk that the tooling is easily contaminated by dust or particles. And this can uh, as a result of the uh, in burning of the component. Okay, now we discuss some applications of laser welding. So here you can see a camshaft sensor out of automotive market. We have here the, the cover and this is a laser transparent black polyamide 66 with 30% glass fiber and then we have the, the body which is our absorbing layer and the cover is the tra transparent layer and the body is also a P66 glass fiber 30% um, and with carbon black as a laser absorber. 
here is another example of a automotive part. This time we have here an, an airbag sensor. And you can see here the cover of the, the sensor uh, is, a, is a white PBT with 30% glass fiber. And the, the body here in black is also a PBT with 30% glass fiber and uh, black carbon black as a laser absorber. Okay, if you want to have more information on polymer engineering topics, I highly recommend my blog, find out about plastics.com, as well as uh, my training courses on material selection um, and material selection for electric vehicles. I will link both the blog and the online course in the description below. Thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Thanks until next time. Bye.